Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a very festive Cologne podcast episode. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. Yeah, keep the change. I don't know. (laughs) I'm Mike. And I'm Ryan. And we're two best friends. One of us has a really sexy voice, and the other one... Just a normal, everyday white guy voice. Stop. (laughs) (laughs) And we're doing a fragrance podcast. We're giving you uneducated opinions. That's right. And today, I searched the webs. I was trying to find a Christmas tree or like some type of pine tree type of smell. Oh, yeah. So a few months back, I was playing. I was like, man, let's do something real festive. So I searched. And lo and behold, some Reddit posts had talked about this brand. Mm Mm-hmm. Pinewood Perfumes. Did you buy a discovery set or did you just pick random ones? Like, why did we get so many samples? (laughs) No, it was the discovery set. I want to say it was like 50 something bucks. And there's a a lot. (laughs) Yeah, my God. For 50 bucks, that's a hell of a deal because we probably got what? 15, 20 fragrances. Yeah. And I don't know if they misspelled it or were being cheeky. Oh, yeah. Because it said when they delivered it to us, it was addressed to the Colonial Podcast. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Spelled like that. (laughs) Which we go all the way back. And I said, like, the invasion of the Cologne podcast, I said in Spanish. (laughs) And since then, every once in a while, Ryan will just randomly go, Colonial Podcast. (laughs) I think maybe this person, whoever joined in this, uh, heard it and sent it. Nonetheless, came in like a little red festive little little yeah. bag here. Do you think they listen? I don't know. That's kind of that like... It seems like that is a little Easter egg of a thing. That's why I'm saying I feel like they did. Yeah, like, or at least so. they have. I don't know. Mm, we got to find out. If you're listening, Pineward, we want to know. Okay. Before we get into these fragrances, I just want to give you a little bit of a layout of how this episode's going to go. It's a little different. This is more Christmassy. We're going to be just opening presents left and right. And by presents, I mean fragrances. We're going to be smelling those (laughs) multiple fragrances on a single episode. Yeah, we picked out five that interested us. Because we got a shitload. We can't do all of them, but we want to do some. One was like gingerbread. I wanted to smell. And then you were like, should we do cocoa mint? And I was like, I will probably hate that. So, yes, we need to do that one as well. So, we have those two. Plus, we have one called White Fur, one called Fog something. Fanghorn. Fanghorn. (laughs) Ryan keeps calling it Foghorn. And then we have Mirkwood, which is their best seller. Apparently, yes. Okay. And I'm really excited for these because reading from the brand, you know, the about section, this is like somebody who loves pine forward type fragrance. He wanted it to smell like realistic forests and stuff. So I'm excited. Me too. <laughs> so let, do we just jump right in? I guess. I think we're starting with white fur, aren't we? We can. Okay. Well, I have a <laughs> Fragrantica review. Hit us with it, Mike. Okay. Well, first, it's from Salivating Soul Stis. <laughs> it's like salivating soul yeah. and then hyphen stis. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice play on words there. <laughs> Uh, And then I think it's a picture of a beaver as their (laughs) avatar. This should have taken the name Clement Pine because there is actually pine in here along with the sweet orange. This is another solid fragrance. White fur in a nutshell is pine mixed with sweet orange. Clement Pine, which I love, was more orange base. Hmm. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Why Clement Pine? Is that like a certain tree or something? I think it's a play on clementine which is like a clementine orange oh and then pine which is a hilarious name and that's a name of one of the fragrances as well clement pine yeah from pineward huh well did we get we didn't get that one though did we i don't i don't know uh, you've been <laughs> like guarding the bag <laughs> like a dragon in his gold just laying on top of it <laughs> okay all right you want to do what with benedict cumberpatch's <laughs> voice <laughs> good lord that Dark, deep voice. I want you to do it first. Okay. (laughs) Because this is the one you were like, I'm really interested in that one. Let's do that one. (laughs) See, (laughs) you and the listeners don't love my voice. (laughs) Woo. Would that stain a shirt? That's Uh, really green. (laughs) Even on the card. These are Parfum Extraits is what it's listed as. Oh, my God. That smells amazing. God, I can smell it from here, and it does smell fucking good. Wow. Yeah. It's a tree. It's like if oranges grew on pine trees is what it smells like. 
like that might be the most realistic orange and most realistic pine I've smelled in a fragrance. And it's strong. I can smell it over here. Ryan's a good arm's oh, length away. That is gorgeous. God. Mmm. Yes. Were you prepared for that out the gate to be that good? No. Here's what I was afraid it was going to smell like. You know, some of the, I won't say the name because I don't want to trash the brand. <laughs> He just mouthed something and whispered it. I have no fucking idea what he said. Okay, well, I'll tell you later. But either way, you know how it's got like that hairspray smell? It smells kind of cheap. Oh, you're saying Mesa Margiela? No. Oh, sorry. I was saying another one that I don't want to trash. But <laughs> I'm not trashing Mesa Margiela. <laughs> But either way, some of these fragrances that lean into the more experimental also kind of smell cheap. Yeah. And I was worried that it was going to go down that route. That's no knock at Pine Word. I just, you know. Yeah. You never know. I mean, I didn't know this fucking brand existed until I found a Reddit post. And like everybody in the post was like blown away by this fucking shit. So, dude, it's incredible. That fragrance right there. I would wear that. That is so unique. Dude, that is so good. If these are anywhere close to this, I'm going to be blown away. But I, I think we're going to be disappointed with the rest. I just have a feeling they can't uh, be this good and it falls right out of the gate. Yeah, they can't all be that good. You're worried. Guys, I'm telling you, this smells. It's like masculine, but it could. I mean, it's unisex, I believe. But it's like masculine, but it's so sweet. It could be feminine. Yeah, that's a badass mm. one. Good God, that's. That is incredible. That is good. God, what's the what's the price on this thing? Two hundred and five dollars for fifty seven ml. Oh, holy crocamoly, baby! Yeah, they that, they be proud of them prices. They're having to hand squeeze those clementines. <laughs> Let's mm. see. I'm God, man, I'd be tempted to though. <sighs> good lord, that smells amazing. Let me find white fur just to make sure. Bottles are. They're okay. They're nothing crazy about the bottles. Oh, yeah. Hey, um, it goes along with the theme, though. It's basically clear glass with like a frosted pine tree on the front. Let me read what they kind of say about it. Okay. I should have done that earlier, and I'll do it earlier with the next ones. And then we also have a message we're going to read. The reason why I keep mentioning that Ryan has such a sexy voice. Oh, God. Don't embarrass me. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you I don't have a sexy voice. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, white fur was constructed in a similar manner to Ponderosa. I'm assuming that's another fragrance I have. Sure. I created, this is the creator. Uh, his name is Nick Nielsen, I believe. Sounds like a country artist. All right. I created a co-extraction of white fur, resin, and needles, refined it into an absolute, and then wore this on my skin a number of times to familiarize myself with its nuances. I selected a series of notes for the perfume that I felt were already present to some degree in the raw extract and added a few structural components. The result is white fur. A delicious pomander ball of perfume festive in nature but with potential to be worn all year yeah the fruity citrus of it makes it to where you could wear it in the summer but then yeah that pine tree popping out is a very wintry type vibe we're probably going to be biased because we really do light pine smells yeah we are out here literally <laughs> behind the pine curtain is what they <laughs> call it wow that is seriously like outdoorsy masculine but on like a real level I'm like giddy about it. That's sick. That's sick. I'm so excited. You know what? Let's follow your excitement then with one I think you're going to be fearful of, and that's Coco Mint. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and crush my dreams. <laughs> As you know, Mike is not a fan of mint. He has come around to some mint fragrances. Yeah, but they have to be like Lamal. <laughs> yeah, that one's amazing. All right. I'm going to do this one. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry. Good God, your mic is going to smell like that for a year. Fuck, that's dark. Sorry if you can hear me splashing over here. I'm staying hydrated. Damn. I seriously like this. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. You no, don't like that? No, no, no. There's something badass about that. There's something to it. There's something good about it, but there's also something that's like just. Uh -uh. I actually sprayed the mic and it smells. 
really good right now. <laughs> this is better than I thought it was going to be. I bet in 10 minutes it'll smell great. Look how fucking dark that is. Yeah. This this might stain close for real. You probably don't want to spray it on light colored clothing. Mm-mm. Damn, this smells good to me. It's like mint chocolate. I guess that's pretty good coming from me because I'm not like a big gourmand. It's not too much over the top. The only mint chocolate I like are the Andes mints. Oh, God. Any other mint chocolate chip anything, I absolutely hate. <laughs> I don't care for that. That coca mint. Now, this one didn't have a, what do you call it, a review. Right. And funny enough, I don't see it listed on their website. That's scary. Oh, what if this is a new one? Huh. I'm trying to make sure it wasn't something that's been renamed or something. Yeah, I hate that I can't tell anybody anything about this yet. So there's no review for this. There's nothing I can find online for it. Hmm. But they sure as fuck gave it to us a sample. Yeah, thing. they did. Huh. Maybe they're giving us the exclusive because they're huge Colonia podcast <laughs> fans. Doubt. <laughs> God, that is, that's pretty damn good. I know you don't like it, but that's pretty damn good. I bet if you like mint chocolate anything, you probably love it. I really don't. And you guys already know how I am about mint. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> it smells like raw cocoa mixed in with toothpaste to me. Hmm. Because it's not super sweet. Yeah, I could get that vibe. You trying to ruin it for me? No, 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 no. No, please enjoy <laughs> it because you're taking that one home with you. <laughs> okay, so. Let's do... I want to get another sniff on white fur again just to cleanse my palate. You want to get... <laughs> you want to get horny on this fang horn? <laughs> yeah, let's get fang horny, baby. <laughs> Look how, like, thick and green, mossy... Yeah, dude. This is like the blood of a tree. <laughs> I'll let you spray this one. Okay. Here we go. Is he processing actual, like, raw stuff, like needles and stuff? He has to be. I got to give kudos to the guy. Yeah. Feels very, like, scientific. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Bad? Bad? Smell it. Just, I'm, I don't want to color your... Whoa. That is realistic AF. It's like, you know the... Wow. You know, like, the green moss that grows on, like, really thick dirt? Yeah. Feels like you just took a big hand of that and just crammed your nose in it. Damn, I don't know if that's wearable or not, but there is something kind of pleasing. It's definitely, I don't know if I want to say intriguing or off-putting, but it's... uh, It may do something. Right now, it's like, that is moldy and mossy, baby. (laughs) I know there's something on this. Let me pull it up real quick. That one was Fanghorn. Yeah, I think I have Fanghorn. Oh, like a little review? Yeah. We should have read that before we did that. That's okay. We'll get into it now. This is loosey-goosey, baby. Okay. You don't know. You just open a gift and then you're like, who's this from? Oh, is this from OTA Mom from Fragrantica? (laughs) Who says, musty and earthy, a bit moldy, and I agree with that, a conceptual scent rather than a fragrance to be worn, my least favorite of the line. Hmm. Woo. That is, um, it's also in a weird way, extremely masculine. Yeah, it is, but God. It smells like somebody that just walked in from chopping trees like fucking Paul Bunyan or something, dude. Yeah, I think there's somebody out there who probably does some really manly shit like that, and they come in, and the woman's like, God, I love when you come out <laughs> smelling like that. And he's probably going to buy some shit like that. Or like foaming at the mouth. Yeah, they're like, oh. <laughs> I mean, it do be like that out there, Ryan. I mean, you keep going back to it. I really think you're kind of intrigued by it. I might be that woman. Oh, man, it is. That one's tough. I'm not going to lie. Let me read you what Nick Nielsen, I believe that's how your name's spelled. Okay. Or pronounced. A dark and sticky fur perfume with. Sorry. Go ahead. (laughs) You parched there, buddy. God damn. You have to have a metal canteen in here. Dude. (laughs) I'm not even sponsored, but I'm going to tell you right now. These <laughs> corksicle bottles, it's called a corksicle. Keeps it's your, not called a corksicle. It really is. What the hell? Has it got some ice bar in it or something? No, but it keeps this water cold all day long. I'm shocked. Huh. Corksicle. amazing at keeping. You know, there's ones that's like, keep your drinks cold for 14 hours. That's all bullshit. They're lying. <laughs> These guys, it's true. Wow. Okay. It's crazy. But you have to. Yeah. 
You know, very yeah. off-putting sound. Sorry about that. <laughs> Continue, Nick Nick Nelson. Yeah, a dark and sticky fur perfume with fresh dew and earthy root qualities. I can agree with that. Yeah, reminiscent of new and old forest growth in harmony. Recreation and renewing of the original Fanghorn, featuring a broader spectrum of what's that word? I'm too dumb. Confury. Coniferous. Oh, coniferous extracts. Voted best artisanal perfume in 2021. Hmm. Nice. Congratulations, Nick. Yeah. Perfume extract. It's they're all perfume extract. But that's uh, that's a little manly. I don't know yeah. if I can pull that off. And, and I'm know, guessing the price is the same on all these. Probably. Yeah, right? they're pretty much. A, they are usually top out at 205 for 57 okay. mil. Yeah, that one is very artsy for sure. Go ahead and get back to that white fur. I think where he's really won is when he's taken it and then actually made it into a wearable fragrance. The white fur so far is still, it's incredible. King. It's ridiculous. Hey, let's go gingerbread. Yo. (laughs) And then we'll save old Merkwood for last. Okay. Make sure I got the atomizer facing the right way and not uh, juicing down your fucking mic. (laughs) Mm, Still smells like uh, cocoa mint. Okay, here we go. Holy shit. You're not going to like this, I don't think, but I have a reason why I like this. No, I love it. Wow. This God. is like like a, what do we call it? A scent memory okay. of the gods right now. So, Todd, <laughs> which mm-hmm. we all know and love. Except for. <laughs> except for one person that gave a review has loved every episode but the one with Todd. And for that we got fucking yeah d- d- Rochambeau forget forget the 250 some on episodes without Todd <laughs> the one with Todd made us go from a five star to a four star Woo. man fuck Todd yeah but real. <laughs> wow so Todd was raised by his grandmother as well just like you were mm-hmm. and I can remember being when we were both in high school at the time you were probably I don't know you were probably fucking kidding uh, I think I was like three or four years old yeah <laughs> <laughs> You're a little idiot playing on jungle gyms and shit. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, wearing diapers and whatnot. <laughs> Todd, when you cut this, just know this smells exactly like his grandmother's house. You'd walk in. It kind of has a vintage, old timey kind of sense of a house in a way, but with that gingerbread, like fresh baked gingerbread. I'm shocked. It smells almost identical to his house. I will give the listeners, if you want a fragrance-related simile, it smells like Tom Ford's fucking fabulous, and then you like sprayed that on a piece of gingerbread. So, you agree it has like that kind of a tinge or something around that gingerbread scent? For sure, yeah. That's more the fucking fabulous you're getting. Yeah, there's like a powderiness, which I could see kind of like that old school. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that is, uh, I don't know if it's for me as a wear, but that's pretty damn good. Intriguing and wearable, for sure. Definitely a scent memory. Like if I was just like, man, Todd left us and doesn't want to talk to us anymore. I can still think about the good old days with him. Right. Uh, man, that's a good one. Wow. Let me read you. Do we have a review on that one? Or did no. We, no. Okay. That was one didn't have one. Okay. Right. But there's also not a one on here either. I wonder if, they, <laughs> wonder if it used to be called Ginger Moss. Hmm. I don't know. I don't want to speculate. I, I don't think this one's listed as well. And if it is... Uh, apologies to Pine Word, but yeah, that one is for me. It's not wearable, but it's definitely a scent. I think it is wearable for someone who leans into heavily feminine fragrances, and they have to lean into very mature fragrances. I think you could wear that. It's like a uh, clean older person's house. They just fucking got the mixer out and mixed the fucking thing of gingerbread mixing mm-hmm. before you put it in the oven, and then they sprayed fucking fabulous all over <laughs> yeah. all over their petticoat. <laughs> God, every last one, except for white fur, every last one of these cards are like stained. Yeah. The fanghorn looks like a tree took a piss on it. Dude. <laughs> yeah. It's like green piss. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Do not spray that on your clothes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. It's the last one. It's their top dick. It's the one that sells the most, apparently. It's the most popular. It's the one I was really honey about. It's the whole reason I even bought this fucking thing, Mike. <laughs> well, and I have 
a fragrance review from Thranduel's Eyes Brows. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thranduel's Eyebrows. I don't know. I don't know where you're going with that, but here's why I got it. You ever it's, notice that people just really do come up with the worst names to try to read? Oh, I know. I always try to keep mine short and simple. Right. Remember the username I wanted to do for Fortnite? Frosted Mini Yeats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Clearly way better than Thranduel's eyebrows. <laughs> well, let me tell you what they say. Nicey, spicy, sweet ash. <laughs> Try again. Three out of five to four out of five. Okay. That is the most random review. Yeah. I got it because I was like, this person sounds like an idiot. <laughs> Watch it be like some huge fragrance reviewer. <laughs> now somebody's going to be like, man, you don't know Thrin Jules eyebrows? Dude, they've been in the game so long. They've got their own fragrance house. God, if I had a nickel for every time you said something bad about somebody out there and happened to be a, a fragrance reviewer, <laughs> right, exactly. I'd have three or four nickels at this point. <laughs> Dude, you'd be jangling around like a janitor. <laughs> Uh, remember when Robes08 randomly messaged us and it oh, like yeah. went nowhere? Like, I thought we were going to be able to like, have him on the show. We were like, hey, you want to come on? He was like, Ha-ha, not yet, freaking losers. <laughs> yeah, he's like, dude, I'm not even making content. Then he started making content. Yeah, and he never got back to us. Hey, Robes. Yeah. Holler at your boy. WTF, mate. <laughs> All right. I'm going to spray this thing and hopefully it's delicious. <laughs> God damn, that shit is fucking dark. Whew. Hmm. Okay. I'm a little let down right now. Oh, man. Okay, here we go. Hmm. Ooh. It is. It's real AF. Yeah, that's like tree mixed with vinegar. Mm-hmm. And something else, like black olive juice. Oh, don't tell me that. I fucking hate <laughs> black olives, dude. <laughs> You ever had to open up a huge can of them? For- yes, I have. I worked at Subway Sandwich oh, God. Artistry for... <laughs> yeah, I worked at uh, Charles Z something. I yeah. don't know. Some- Charles Entertainment. <laughs> yeah. God, I remember having to open them. They wanted us to transfer them to like a fucking plastic. Like a Cambro. Yeah. Something. I was like, this is the... Mo- I was like, the moment I saw, like when I opened a can, I smelled it. It smells like piss, pretty much. <laughs> I was like, like a, I'll never eat these again. Like dusty, dirty piss. Yeah, yeah. real dusty, dirty. So speaking piss. of Merkwood, <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I don't. God, I hate that this is the most popular one. How is white fur not the most popular one? I know, dude. That must be like some mix up. People get slurpy on the weirdest stuff. This is. Now let me say this. I feel like it's like fanghorn okay but like pulled back and not as super realistic on the uh honey notes over there mm-hmm. are your messages done coming through on there bro <laughs> Fuck. i hope so jeez thought you brought a goddamn vibrator <laughs> to this fucking show dude i think it's uh listeners tell me how sexy and deep my voice is <laughs> God, it smells the most niche out of all these fragrances. It smells like a niche fragrance we've smelled before. Like somebody wants to smell it. It's kind of like, uh, it's definitely mature. Kind of got that Pier 1 imports from some of these other fragrances I've smelled before. Kind of mm. like a wicker chair kind of thing going on. Okay. But like foresty. There's like, I don't know, man. There's like some pickled okra type smell. <laughs> what the hell? You ain't never had pickled okra? Hell no. Hey, me and your brother were just talking about pickled okra. God, that sounds gross as shit. Dude, I grew up loving it. I love fried okra. Pickled <laughs> okra? No. Yeah. No. Well, you don't really like pickles in general. Hell no. <clears throat> yep. I got to say, white fur is the clear champion today. God, that one is so good. I got to smell clement pine now. That's the best one of the bunch right there. Just dig through there. See if happenstance we've got some clement pine. Tell you what. I'll dig through half. You dig through half. Yeah, let's get through it quick. Okay. Coffee to back. We got a second white fur over here. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Sturbridge. Borealis. Uh carvanaris christmas wine god why didn't we smell this one on this christmas episode? hey we need to go ahead and do that one i think let me tell you why because he said he's not into gimmicks he doesn't care about exposure on his website that's what it said but he said this is the only one that's a limited one he only does this one during christmas time 
Wow. Okay. Fuck. Yeah, we got to smell that one. Sorry, my bad. I should have knew that we should have done that one. Um, Borklin. I don't know what that word is. Uh, <laughs> Icefall and Chandelier. What the fuck? I don't know. You think we just do the Christmas wine? Yeah, let's pine and wine it, baby. Let me see by chance if there's a thing on it. Okay, go. he definitely has a thing here, but let's also see if... Uh, he looks like a young guy, by the way. Really young guy. And he kind of looks like uh, some actor I can't remember. Well, he's probably good looking then. Uh, he's sharp cap. Let's see here. Um, Christmas wine is on Fragrantica, so we can read a review. I'm pulling it up right now. Hmm. Dude, that white fur is incredible. It's amazing. Man, this has got some big old plums in it, dude. Oh, here we go from Ayo Usagi. <laughs> says, got to echo the other reviews here. This screams candle. All pine wood scents I've tried settle down to something candly, <laughs> but this one starts there and never lets up. Cranberry Christmas candle. Hmm. Okay. And a very cute dog as their avatar. You're going to stalk them now? I would. I <laughs> love the pups. I'll let you go first on this one. Okay. Let you have a little funsy with it. Yeah. I hate wine, by the way. Uh, they're hit or miss. There's some that I like. Oh, I forget how cultured you are, Ryan. <laughs> God, every single one of these fragrances except for white fur are like stained masterpieces. <laughs> <laughs> they are rich in color. Hmm. Okay. I need to process what I'm thinking. You go ahead and just get a sniff on that. Smells better in the air, for sure. <laughs> yeah, up close, it's a little pungent. A little, yeah, stings the nostrils. <laughs> I get the candle vibe. I do, but I don't hate it. No. Dude, in the air, it's actually pretty badass. It's really good, yeah. Up Ryan close, it is. A- waving the tester strip around. <laughs> it's actually it smells pretty really good. good. Yeah. It's sweet and spicy. I do get that fruitiness. I do get the cranberry candle wax kind of vibe. Yeah. Damn, it's not as whiny. Yeah, thank God. As I thought it was going to be. I'm kind of disappointed in that. I thought it was going to be all wind out. That's good for me. Uh, let me read you what he's wrote or okay. written. Yuletide Glog. Muled wine on Christmas night. An unfiltered melange. Is that a word? M-E-L-A-N-G-E? Yeah, sure. Melange of rich cranberry fur and spices. The same formula as the 2021 edition, Parfum Extract. These are all definitely Parfum Extracts. Yeah, there's sm- it's got a little cherryness to it. Maybe I'm, maybe that's the plum or something, but it smells like warm and kind of like not smoky, but definitely the like the fireplace ambiance. Yeah. I will have to say experience wise these are kind of out there it's very all these yeah. you know what these are these are very unapologetic yeah i love that i do too it doesn't mean we have to like all of them but i can honestly say minus the murkwood i've really never smelled anything like these before I, ever i'm going on the skin with the white fur god even my skin just turned green yeah Fuck. you're looking like the incredible hulk oh god Mm, that smells good. That is seriously a badass fragrance. It makes me want to smell that clement pine now. I know. Fuck. There's got to be more in this collection like this. We're not going to go through them all here. We may sporadically drop something out on Patreon for you guys. But when we smelled this first one, I was really hoping that he was just hitting home runs like that Same. every single one. I of knew them. it couldn't be. It was going to be it, too good to be true. Yeah. Not. To, it's not a knock, by the way. No. I think what he really wants to do with this is to kind of have these realistic smells. And I think there's some there's something out there for some people and some not, obviously. Sure. But that one was specifically mentioned as being something that could be wore all year round, the white fur. And I absolutely agree. Yeah. It's incredible. That is Out of sick. all these, this is definitely the wearable one. Crazy. I could see where, again, somebody who wants like a gingerbread Christmassy version or even cold weather version of fucking fabulous, this would be a great take, I'm, especially now that it's drying down. It's smelling really good. I know you used to love the fucking fabulous. Yeah. And I, I don't think I remember smelling it when you had it. You had I know. a sample of it or decant. I have a 10 mil travel atomizer. <laughs> so you we, still have some. Yeah. We need to do an episode on it for sure. It was one of my favorite fragrances for a long time. Mm, that white fur. God, it's it's really tempting to buy a bottle of that. It's just so unique. I can't imagine somebody smelling that and not being like, 
you smell so amazing. <laughs> and I just got to ask, what is that? It is very unique. It is so manly. Yeah. I don't know why, but right now it's reminding me of something from Zerzhoff. I don't know why. Hmm. A little Zerzhi right now. Yeah, Zerzhi boys. <laughs> Which one did I get? What sample set did I get? I don't know. Maybe it's this fall collection. Let me see. Uh, nope. Did you get like a Christmas collection? God, I'm trying to see, man. Which one did I fucking get? Hold on. I don't mean to stop the show for this, but I'm really curious. I don't know. I don't even know where I, where, where the ones I got. I don't see it on there anymore. We'll clear all that out. Okay. Cut that out, Todd. Okay. So, I guess out of the six now that we've smelled, the one winner of these six, absolute. Yeah. If we're going to say a sample to a buy- I yeah. think we'd both agree the white fur is like, you got to smell this, guys. Yeah. Hard sample. Like I said, I'm I'm so tempted to pull the trigger on that. Price is a little steep. And I'm sure they're, you know, it's an X straight. And this stuff, I mean, it is viscous. This stuff is <laughs> thick. Dude. So I don't have any question that probably the raw materials in that X straight cost enough to justify the cost. It's just, that's a lot. That oh, is yeah. a lot for 57 mil. I don't know why it has to be such a random number. There's got to be something deeper to that. <laughs> There's 57 stars in the constellation. <laughs> yeah. 57 different types of pine tree. <laughs> hey, maybe. I don't know. But <laughs> for whatever reason, this one, yeah, knocked knocked out, just blown away by how good that is. I'm I am tempted to say a buy. Definitely a hard, hard sample. I'll agree. Hard sample because I'm blown away that it's so kind of outdoorsy, pine, orangey, but it's like neither are over the top and it's like so well blended that I feel like it's it's kind of mass appealing, right? Yeah, for sure. Better on the card. Way better on the card. Although I would be scared to spray it. I'm wearing a white shirt right now. I would is definitely- Is that a throwaway know. shirt or no? I was going to say, you should test a little spot. Uh, Maybe the over your nipple or something. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it down at the base. By your crotch, like you've been leaking, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, green. Wow. The yeah. shit is thick, guys. Dude, that may turn into me buying another white shirt here pretty soon. Uh, yeah, this wasn't cheap. <laughs> then why'd you do it? I thought it was a regular t-shirt. Like a white t-shirt. It's for science, Ryan. <laughs> Good God. All right. Let's read a couple of emails. Did you want me to read the more serious one first or you want to? Wait yeah. For- so we're going to read one serious about our previous episode about men's mental health. And then we're going to finish up with what you've been waiting for. The secret email uh, about Ryan's golden voice. Oh, my God. Stop. So uh, we did get somebody that left a message on the actual episode on like on the Spotify platform. The Tried Truth. Hello, Mike and Ryan. Love the show. Also following on YouTube. Lost both parents 10 days apart in 2023. Thanks for recognizing the pain that comes with the holidays. It is so true. Uh, We beat it to death last episode, but it is a tough time. It's like such a supposed to be a fun, joyous time. But as you become adults in life and people pass on, it's not what it was when you were a kid, the golden era of it, the memories you have tied to it, the fun, the intrigue. It's more of like the things you used to have in your life. Right. You know, so, man, I couldn't even, you know, losing my mom four years ago, I still haven't recovered. I couldn't imagine losing both my parents 10 days apart. I'm so sorry to hear that for real. That is just unbelievable. I can't even imagine. Um, I feel like this is our perspective on life in general, but especially around the holidays. When you're younger, it's all like the excitement of the future, like running down the stairs and seeing all the presents. and yeah. open. But as you get older, you more reflect on the past. Yeah. And I feel like you do that with life, too. As, when you're younger, you can't wait to be 16 and drive a car. You can't wait to be 18 and smoke cigarettes and get all that <laughs> nicotine. You can't wait to be- <laughs> I'm just kidding. (laughs) You like, you know, you can't wait to be older and have all the freedoms and privileges that come with being older. And then as you get older, you reminisce on the better times when you were younger and you didn't have bills and (laughs) the life stresses on you. So, (laughs) um, sorry to hear that. And thank you so much for writing in. 
Yeah, obviously, 2023 has been tough for absolutely everybody. I know it's been tough for you, whoever you are that wrote that. And just know, appreciate you writing us and feel free to write us an email, get in personal contact with us. I really hope the best for you during these times and know that you do have some people you don't know us personally. Yeah. But we genuinely do care. And I'll be saying some some thoughtful prayers for you, man. Yeah, likewise. Now on to, you want to read another one? Yeah. Don said, this episode is why I've finally become a Patreon. I believe I could be the female version of Ryan. (laughs) Family caregiver, introvert, sexy voice, (laughs) happily on the frag journey. Great episode, guys. Your podcast always brightens my day. Thank you so much, Don. I appreciate that. I do not like my voice, so thank you for giving me a compliment. I appreciate that. <laughs> Makes me feel a little bit better about it. You know, you he acts like he doesn't, but he's <laughs> always like, I'll catch him. Sometimes I'll come in here and it'll just be him on the mic going, hey, hey, <laughs> hey, it's Ryan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Ryan, we got work to do. Uh, <laughs> should we read him the Hardly James one, actually? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally, bro. <laughs> Longtime listener and friend of the podcast, Harley James, who also runs Kojo. Kojo Roastery, which no bullshit. You guys got to get on some of that Kojo. That coffee is actually fucking incredible. Yeah, it really is. This, again, he hasn't sponsored an episode. Nope. He just was like, hey, you guys appreciate fragrances, and I'm sure you appreciate some coffee. Sent us some coffee one time, and it was phenomenal. So good. And low key, we're behind the scenes working on a way to hook you guys up with some cool coffee mugs and a bag of Kojo with each coffee mug. Yes, sir. And he wrote, just listen to the men's mental health episode. I just wanted to reach out and say I want to be here for you guys in any way some random stranger can be. I'll keep you guys both in my thoughts and prayers through the holiday season. I'm blessed beyond words with a big family that's still all here. Even though family comes packaged with its own unique issues. Right. You absolutely do not have to, but I'd love to hear more about Mike's life growing up. Oh. I guess so I can understand you more. Winky tongue hanging out face. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, because otherwise you're confusing. You're an anomaly of a human being. He says why he was raised by his grandmother, etc. You guys are both emotionally intelligent and adapted. It seems to me and a huge inspiration to myself. Happy face. Oh, thanks, man. Well, first of all, we've enjoyed getting to chat with you because we've actually got to be on a few video chats with Harley. First of all, hard working dude. Very. He's got a lot of irons in the fire <laughs> and it was a, a joy to chat with him. So I really do hope that we can work out the coffee mug thing. We're just we're trying to honestly figure out a way to keep the prices low and still have a high enough quality coffee mug to go along with probably some of the most badass coffee you'll ever drink. (laughs) Yeah. I will answer just quickly what he said about my childhood. I can delve into it later episodes, but just briefly why I was raised by my grandparents uh, is that my, my mom really loved drugs and she got arrested and went to prison for a long time and (laughs) my dad worked a lot and got into a bind and he decided to move to a far another state to find an easier life um I swear I'm not an asshole, guys. It was just the setup and delivery of that. I really didn't think you're going to go like uh, full on, full heavy metal, just telling us that detail out there. Oh, oh, I mean, oh, I sorry. know it. Yeah, yeah. And he knows I'm not being an asshole to him. It was just oh, the dude, delivery well, of it was uh, impeccable. <laughs> it, let me tell you, I have a wild childhood. I really do. I it does. I have a lot of memories that have been blocked out and erased, but- The ones I do have are wild AF. Why is it that everybody I know in my life that, for one reason, everybody that I know on a personal level has had some level of crazy trauma, and then on top of that, all of you are all the same and like level and like know how to navigate life, but it's probably because you just, it was like thrown to the fire early on. Yeah, it affects people differently. And this is such an interesting way to kind of uh, fade out our (laughs) Christmas episode. But for me, the reason why my grand, first of all, my grandmother raised nearly all of her grandkids. Um, But I was already spending a ton of time at my grandmother's house because my dad 
lived with my grandmother after the divorce. And then as he kind of looked for greener pastures, it just made more sense for me to stay with my grandmother. But I also have a biological sister who had the same childhood I had, but... She went down a similar route as my mom, got yeah. really into drugs, was arrested multiple times, mm. just wild. So it's weird to see because, yes, some people with this same type of childhood become extremely ambitious. They also become very independent because they felt like they had to be. I think that's part of me. Like, also, my grandmother was so old school, like, really all like Christmas usually meant for me, like Christmas gifts was like she would get me a bag that would have pecans, apples and oranges oranges in it. And that was like my gift. Other than that, I could get one article of clothing that I really needed. So maybe it was a pair of pants. Maybe it was a pair of shoes. Walmart shoes, by the way. Yeah. And if I was like wanted a cool pair of shoes, (laughs) I would have to go mow lawns or something, get money to go buy a hundred dollar pair of shoes or even like a $50 pair of Converse. It's just because we were on, they lived off social security. It did push me to be very ambitious early on. I started a lawn mowing business when I was really young because I needed it to, like I wanted to learn the guitar Yeah, and I couldn't afford to buy one. So I tried to build my first guitar (laughs) and uh, it worked. (laughs) Not the most playable thing, but it worked. But that like got me to like, you know, get out there and kind of hustle and learn how to build a business and stuff like that. So uh, I started that very early on. And it's definitely, it's definitely helped you in life. And man, you and the other two people that I know, it's like all y'all are like the same. You think very far ahead because you want to make sure nothing bad happens. Right. You're like keeping everything balanced all the time. Yeah. I think it's because you grow up with so much uncertainty that stability means everything to me. Yeah. You know, that's that's exactly Um, what they say. yeah. Yeah. So. There you go. That's a little bit. Hopefully, that is not just. That was all a, of it, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> pretty pretty much it. I can, if we want to like go full psychiatrist mode, I can tell you some wild ass stories. But <laughs> I mean, that there may be some trigger warnings from some other people in there. But I'm a very happy human being now. Ryan, it, my closest family. He is my brother, my best friend. Uh, or is this going to go live on Christmas, Christmas Eve? When when is this going live? Uh, it is going live. On Christmas Day. Uh, nobody's going to listen to this shit on Christmas. But, hey, if you do, you know, for one, I mean, huge thanks because you, you should be with your family. Right. Just turn us off and go listen. To- but by family. now, if you've listened to all 250 some episodes, you probably feel like family. Yeah. And you probably feel like going. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, we seriously, we have appreciated you guys. We're coming up in April of this year. Three years doing this I, wow. this is the longest thing we've ever done like as a project ever together on anything yeah and we've had some wild ones guys i mean i was telling him the other day i kind of want to <laughs> do a crossover episode with something we used to do back in the day i think would make for something really cool here i think we should tell them what it is really quick we used to we started a youtube channel yes this is probably how old now Years and years, five years ago, maybe I think it's more than that. Yeah. Okay, five or six years ago, maybe. But we did this thing called the Couch Dwellers. Right. This is before we figured out everything with the mics. So this it's not is perfect. This is why we have a podcast today, actually. Yeah, it actually kind of morphed from that because we did that in another studio at the time. Yes. Then and we moved out of the studio. Yeah. And we couldn't film video anymore. So we did two or three audio episodes that were very podcasty. Yeah. And then from there, we were like, this podcast sucks. <laughs> Let's do <laughs> yeah. a podcast about fragrances. <laughs> it's so funny that the thing we love the most in life is movies and the history of yeah. film and everything. But man, those two episodes, although I do like them, they're not good as this. Yeah, but- And we know nothing about this. But it also, if you go back and listen to episode one of this podcast- yeah, it's pretty rough. It's still shitty. <laughs> <laughs> but the YouTube channel was a cool concept. It's yeah. like this podcast meets mystery science theater. Yes. Yeah. And we would watch movie trailers and- you know, give our review of like, are we going to go see it? Are we excited about it? Yeah. And we did it. We shot it on a two person couch and we did the camera behind us. And if we had the whole wall was green screened. Yeah. And we cut one little section out where we put an actual T 
TV up there. Yeah, and we would watch the TV and listen, you know, <laughs> and kind of record us. And it kind of morphed into something. And we were serious about it for a minute. I still want to do some of those sometimes, man. Yeah. I'd love to do actual movie reviews and talk about shit. Right. You yeah. Know, and then you could show little clips of the show. Whatever. But <laughs> I want to do a cross thing with it. Somehow fragrance related. I don't know what right. we could do. Maybe make fun of some uh, old commercials or something. We'll see. But yeah, that this has been such a long journey. Really longer than three years. But we're coming up on three years. We've got a lot of stuff planned for this podcast. Yeah. We're never satisfied. I'm telling you, we're never happy. Why we're happy with the thing, but we're never like, we've, we've reached the peak of this thing. It's done. It feels like we're not even close. Yeah. You guys didn't know this, but we're creeping up on season five. Mm -hmm. And normally, you know that because we just die and fall off the face of the earth for three months and then another season comes. <laughs> but we already told you we're never doing that again. No, we're not. I've thought about it. But we've got some <laughs> big ideas. Yeah, Ryan just like thought of not answering my phone call for a few months straight. Uh, we've got some big ideas for season five. We're really excited about it. And we've got some ideas how to take this podcast and not just give you the same thing, but pour more love into it, more excitement behind it. The more Patreons we get, the more that opens up the possibility for us to build this into something bigger. Yeah. Let me leave you guys with one last thing before we get out of here. Seriously. Try to enjoy this holiday season the best you can. Remember your loved ones. Cherish the ones that are still here with you, friends as well. Yeah. And try to put some good out there into the world. We all know there's a lot of shitty things in this life. Yeah. Try to put some good out there. I don't care if it's just by showing love to a stranger, however that may be, or, <laughs> <laughs> or possibly, I don't know finding somebody getting them something it could be a dollar try to do something nice let's put some good out to the world we love you guys very much i'll tell you one thing really quickly this may sound dumb but around the holidays whenever i first had my kids i was working at a dunkin donuts we were i mean we were living off of that yeah and sometimes people would come by and they would leave like Ten dollar tip, twenty dollar tip. You know, and we we would split tips. Yeah. But times were so hard then that that little gesture, I would literally burst into tears when somebody would give like a tip that big, Damn. because it meant the difference between like buying, uh, you know, another pack of diapers or something like that. That's a big thing. And so I try to practice that in my own life. And I'm not saying this to be like, oh, I'm Mr. Badass Generosity guy. <laughs> But I just know that tacking on an extra $5 to a tip won't hit me as hard, but the person that receives that, that's a huge jump for them. Oh, so yeah. just little stuff like that. I just remember in my own life around the Christmas holiday, getting extra special tips like that. And you guys, knowing you guys, you're all great and you probably do something like that too. But that's such a precious thing. And if you're looking for ways just to be sweet and kind to strangers, that's one place to start. Absolutely. As always, we love you guys. Have a good Christmas. And until next time, spray it up, y'all.